Hey, this is Carrie Canary Quilts, and we are on week 14 of our Dear Jane Quilt Along for 2024. And I'm so happy to see everybody who's following along, um, who either started their Dear Jane or have picked it up again and started doing it. Um, it really is um, fun to see all your blocks. If you want to share your blocks on uh, social media, you can do so with the Dear Jane the hashtag Dear Jane QAL and I'll find it or and you can and or you can tag at Canary Quilts and I'll be able to find it that way and I will share it with everybody else. So I have had a few people who are doing that and I share their blocks out on social media. Um, a little bit of other business to get to is if you're quilting along and you're not doing any of the EQ8 um, I have time codes for the construction of the blocks in the description below this video. You can go right to those and skip the EQ8 stuff I'm going to do here. But anyway, we are starting over here on our right side row today, which means we are making a lot of progress. Um, this week I am, be, I am going to modify a block and I am using a couple variations this week. So it's going to be an interesting week. But let's um, go over here. I am using uh, reds and like dark purple batiks this week for my colors. So I have my blocks over here and I tried to color them as close to what I'm going to be using. So let's populate my color chart. That's always really fun to do. Um, let me know if you're doing that also because um, I just find it so much fun to see how the quilt's coming together. Anyway, we have A13. We are be doing D5. And G3, H8, and then RS1. So I need to rotate that block. And there we go. That's what our blocks are looking like in the color chart. So let's head over to the block work table and I'm going to start right away with how I'm going to modify A13. All right, I have pulled up A13. And there's also a, a variation of this block. Um, this one is going to have, if we look at foundation paper piecing, it's just a lot of pieces. These are foundation sections, and then we're going to have Y seams here in the corner and two down here. I personally don't want to deal with that. I want my block to go together a little bit easier, so... Um, let's take a look at the variation of A13 and why I'm not even, I don't even want to consider that. It's right here, and you can see that they took the colored points out. So I don't even want to work with that one. I want the colored points. So let's go back here. I have A13 up. So let me show you what I'm going to do to take the Y seams out of this. Let's go over here to draw. What I want to do is... I want to create a corner here. Let me draw this out. I want to create a corner, four corners that look like this. So then that leaves the center section and these center sections as rectangles. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is get me, whoops, let me get my line drawing and I want to go from this point and I just want to go straight up. And this point and go straight up. All right, so we need to do that with all of these points. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do that. All right, so you can see that I have now created this corner square but we still have this Y seam here. So let's take start at this point and just draw a line right down the diagonal in each corner. So what this does is it splits each corner in half. So if we take a look at the foundation paper piecing now, we need to resection this because this can be resectioned now. Let's hit start over, and I want to make each corner two sections. So hit that one in group, hit this one in group. And I'm going to do that in all four corners. Group them out as two sections. All 
All right, so you can see I have squares here. So these are gonna to go together very nicely once I get the two sections done. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna create an entire row here as one section. So I am going to highlight all of these in a row and hit group. You can see if we start in the center, we can work out and we don't have any intersecting seams, so we can do it. Same thing here, each of these two can be sections. There we go. No Y seams, straight lines, makes it so much simpler in my mind to put this together. So, I'm gonna print this out and that's how I'm gonna be doing this block. So, I am going to save this over here. I'm gonna add it. it says I already have it because I've done it before. Um, I'm gonna put yes, and then what you can do is because it's gonna be unnamed, it's probably at the end, right here, you can see all the different iterations. So it doesn't, if you hit the edit note card, it has no name, so you can call it A13 uh, modified for no Y seams or something like that. So I've already done that on the block that I used over here. Right here, I called it, you can see it pops up and says A13 modified for FPP, no Y seam. So you know which block it is and you can find it. And I can come over here and delete these blocks now. All right, that is how I modified A13 for no Y seams. If you wanna follow along and do the same thing. So let's head to the next block. All right, we have B5 Cathedral Window. I am going to foundation paper piece this. You can see the sections are nice and clean here. So this is not gonna be hard to put together. All right, I am doing G3 Leaf, Four Leaf Clover Variation One, which is applique. So I will want to print templates, and this is what it looks like. This is the template. I don't know what this weird line is, but you'll just cut out this piece and add it to your background and then put this piece in the center by applique. Um, this is the variation. Let's see what the other one looked like. I can't remember at the moment why I didn't want to do it. I think it's pieced. Nope. Oh, it's applique with the center being applique also. So I don't want to do that. I want to have this outer piece and my center just be the pieces that I want. So that's why I chose variation two. And there actually is a, another variation, variation one, or variation, let's see, I'm I, sorry, I'm doing variation one. Variation two looks like it's a little thinner on the outside and it looks like these pieces are separate and this is just one piece and I, I like the way this looks. That's why I chose variation one. All right, on to the next block. All right, this is H8 Eaton's Crossroads variation two. This is, as you can see, pieced and applique. So I chose this one because I just want to put these pieces in the middle here as applique and then I'm going to foundation paper piece the outside of these and you can see that each corner is two sections just like we did in the first block that I showed you that we modified and then I've got one big piece in the middle so that I can just add my applique. Let's see what the other variations look like. This is H8 variation 2 Oh, that's pieced. So I really didn't want to do that many curved pieces, so that's why I went with the applique. And then HA up, H8 up here is also pieced, just looks a little different. So I went with variation two, which is an applique version. So there are other versions if you want to give them a try. And then we finally have our RS2, right side number two. And this is a straightforward foundation paper piece. We have three sections that make up the middle and then these two outer pieces that we're going to put together. So that's how I'm doing this week's block. Um, I hope maybe I showed you how to take out Y seams in the 
um, first block and um, why I'm doing the other ones. So let me know what you're doing in the comments, if you did any other variations, um, if you took the Y seams out also, I'd love to hear from you. So uh, hit the subscribe button notification bell if you want to follow along on the quilt along journey or just watch this quilt go together, maybe learn some EQ8 stuff and do all the other fun stuff we've got here. So let's get started on our blocks. Let's get started on week 14 of the Dear Jane quilt along and we are starting with the A13 which I modified earlier in the video in my EQ8 portion um, so that there are no Y seams. So this is what it looks like and it's really a lot of the same types of pieces here. So we have eight or we have four corners that are put together here. Basically these eight pieces are exactly the same. It's just four of them are mirror images. So I'll put one of these together and then these two pieces are you know half of this piece. So this center piece is just two of these put together with a square. So I'll put one of these together. Uh, the pieces I have, and by the way, my cut pieces that I use in this video are on my website if you want to use them. If you like the way that they work for me, you can head to, there's a link in the description below to my website where you can grab these cut pieces. So these dark purple are gonna be here in the corner, these pieces. And then the other dark purple squares are for these triangles in this square right here. These small white rectangles are for the white rectangles in the center and for these triangles in the corner. And then the longer white rectangles are in these corners over here. So let me get my pieces cut out and we'll get started. All right, here's the two pieces I'm gonna demonstrate. I'll do this one first. I've drawn it out. Here's the corners of my piece. Here's the seam we want. My number one piece is a white, so I need one of these bigger rectangles. My number two piece is a purple, so I need one of these. So I want to put my white piece on so it's covering those corners. It's a quarter of an inch over my seam line. I'm gonna grab my purple. And right here is the seam allowance. So I'm just barely over that edge. And if we just kind of test this, you can see I'm covering all the paper. So I have plenty of coverage here. I am going to sew on the line between one and two and we'll be done with this piece. So that's pretty easy to put together and there's eight exactly like this. All right, there's my first corner. One of my first corners put together. And we have seven more of these exactly like this one. And I will trim all of these when I'm finished with everything. I like to trim all at the end, but we have fabric surrounding our entire seam allowance. So I made my pieces big enough. All right, move on to this piece. And here's what I did on the back. I drew it out pretty much. The paper is the outline of my piece, so. I have my first piece is going to be here, and that's the white. Second piece is this triangle, which is purple, and then three and four are white pieces. So I need one of these smaller rectangles. I'm going to put it on here. You can, I can see that this is my seam allowance. So my white pieces are on the outside of that. I'm off the paper, so that's good. I'm going to take one of these purple squares I'm just gonna line it up right here and that's gonna be plenty of coverage for my purple triangle and then right here is the seam allowance. So we will sew on the line right here between one and two. There's my first two pieces. Turn it over, we'll go between two and three and I want to trim it along that line, trim my seam allowance. I don't know what happened to my smaller one. I gotta locate it. And I'm gonna take one of the smaller rectangles, white rectangles right here, line it up there, and you can see it's plenty big enough once it gets folded over to go off the paper. So I'm gonna sew on the line between two and three, and then I'm gonna repeat the exact same thing for my fourth piece. There we go, that's what my piece looks like. Got plenty of coverage. And like I said, this piece is exactly like these two end pieces in here. So 
you know how to put that together. I'm gonna finish all these pieces and then we'll put our block together. I've got my pieces cut out here. And this is our center strip right there. And then these are the two center strips in these rows. We have to put together our four corners, which will be identical. So I have my four identical corner pieces in this pile and my four in this pile so that we can put them together like that. And I trimmed them with the notches and I'm gonna put them together notch to notch. Just like that. So I'm gonna sew down this line right here and I think I will iron this seam open. There's my corner pieces. I ironed them open. Now we have a nine patch. So I'm gonna put these together in rows and these two pieces are ironed this way, so I think I will iron towards the center piece here in these two rows, and then we'll get a nested seam right here when we put our three rows together. So I'm gonna get this put together, and I think once I put my three rows together, I will iron those seams open. Finished up my A13 Starlight Star Bright, which I'm telling you what, I've had Madonna's Lucky Star song stuck in my head the entire time making this block because she sings that Starlight Star Bright in her lyrics. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Madonna Lucky Star from the 80s video and you'll see or you'll hear the song. All right, I hope I made it maybe a little simpler for you to put together this way. There are more seams in it, but... Um, kind of became a no-brainer to put together. Next up is D5 Cathedral Window. That's what it's gonna look like. And this should not be too hard to put together. These center pieces are just three in a row. And these corner pieces should be pretty easy. So I'll put together one of these corner pieces and then we can put the whole block together. So the pieces I have cut for this are all of these white rectangles you can see where they go in here. It's pretty obvious. And then in here are the purple triangles. These are the tiny little purple squares. And then this is the center purple. For me, it's purple. All right, let's get started. All right, here's the corner I'm going to get started with. I chose the C section and um, all the corners are exactly the same. I'm going to start here with C1, then move to C2 is the triangle and C3 is the next strip. I have drawn these out. C1, I wrote is white, C2 is purple, C3 is white, and I put in my seam lines and I can, here's my corners of my seam allowances. All right, so let's take one of these. I'm gonna go to C1 and make sure that I've got coverage here in the corners and a quarter of an inch over this seam line. I'm going to take my purple triangle. It needs to be oriented like that. So I'll flip it over like this. I'm gonna line it up with my white strip. Make sure I've got at least a quarter of an inch over here past this seam allowance and it looks like it's gonna be big enough to get out here. So now I'm going to sew on the line between C1 and C2 and lock stitch right there at that point. First two pieces are on. Third piece is gonna be another strip, white strip for me, and I've gone ahead and trimmed my quarter of an inch. So now we can just take one of my white strips and line it up so that we have coverage all the way out beyond these points right there, our seam allowance. We're gonna sew between C2 and C3. There's the corner piece put together. I have plenty of coverage with all my pieces. You can see all of these are just three pieces we're putting together. So I'm gonna finish these out and then we'll put our um, block together so it looks like the cathedral window. I wanna come back on here for these pieces here. Um, this is an F1 here in the middle. So you're starting with the bigger piece. This one is not. Um, I, it's because you want to have nested seams in here. But one thing about starting with a small piece and going to a longer piece like this is if you get off at all here, your piece could skew off. So I personally am going to change this to one and this one to two. 
the same here, this one to one, this one to two, and then just deal with non-nested seams. I would rather do that. So I just wanted to let you know how I'm headed. Um, if you want to do the same thing, but I have done it where I put a small piece on first like this. And then when you get this long piece that has to go out, you can get it skewed off just a little bit without knowing it. So that's why I'm changing it. So I'm going to do it this way, make sure that I have plenty of coverage and then put my small piece on and sew it. All right, there's my pieces all put together. What we need to do is put this center section together. Um, I'm just gonna line my seams up right here. Even though they aren't nested, I'm still gonna line them up. Sew these pieces together, I'm gonna iron them open and then we'll come back and put our corners on. There's the center piece done and I ironed my pieces open. So let's take a corner. I'm gonna go across my seams for the first one. And I cut the notches out of my triangle here, my corner piece. So I'm just lining my notches up with the edge of my center piece. And I am going to sew on this line. And I think I'll iron my pieces open. I'll let you know how that goes. There's my first two corners. I sew, or I iron them open. So let's put our last two corners on and they should line up also. And they do, but they're lining up with this notch right here. And I am gonna iron this open, see how that goes. D5 Cathedral Window is done. I love those contrast of colors. That is really pretty. That was not a hard block to put together and it is just so stunning of a block. Next is G3 Four Leaf Clover. I have chosen the entire, entirely applique version of this. So I've got my appliques traced on the solid line and I've put them down on my fabrics and then I cut out my background square. So all I need to do is get these cut out, get them positioned onto here and iron them on. So that's what I'm gonna do, not too hard. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my center down and it's probably hard to see, but I creased my fabric. I folded it, creased it so I know where the middle is. I've creased this one way, I'm going to crease it the other way, and then that way I can line my creases up and hopefully this will be centered. So let's get this pulled off, find my creases. Creases are lined up, so there we go. That should be in the center or very, very close to it. Now this piece I want to be around the edges and I want it to be a quarter of an inch from each edge. So, you know, I could put a ruler down a quarter of an inch from this side and one from this side and that should, if I bump it up against those as I'm laying it down, I should end up with a quarter of an inch around. So. That's kind of how I'm gonna do it. It's not very scientific, but it should work. Now that it's sticky, it's gonna be a little bit harder too. And there you go, my very unscientific method of putting my applique on, but it's gonna work. It looks like I got a quarter of an inch around the edges here, so. All I need to do is iron this down. There we go. G3 Four Leaf Clover Variation 1, which is the all applique variation. Next up is Eaton's Crossroad H8. I'm doing Variation 2, which means that my inside pieces are applique. I've already got them drawn out. I drew on the solid line and put them on my fusible and put them onto my fabric. Um, the other pieces I have for this is I have a large center piece here that goes in the middle. My purple triangles are all here in the outside. I have larger white triangles, which are larger triangles out here. And then the smaller triangles are in here. So all of these pieces out here are virtually the same, except for these longer pieces have this extra small triangle. 
So this section is the same in all of these. So I'll put together one of these and then the rest will be virtually the exact same thing. So let's get started on that. And then um, the last thing we'll do is after we put it all together is put our applique on. So here's the piece that I'm gonna demonstrate. And we are gonna need one large triangle, two small triangles in the light or white color, and then one small purple triangle, which is what I've got. I've only got those. I've gone ahead and drawn it out. Here's my corners of my seam allowance right here, and then my seam lines in the middle. We're gonna start over here with the big white triangle, which is our first piece, and then our second is a small white triangle. Third piece is our purple, and then the fourth piece is a small white triangle. So let's start here with our large white triangle. It's gonna be oriented like this. So I'm gonna make sure not only do I have it a quarter of an inch over the line between one and two, but I you can't see any of the seam allowance lines that I've drawn over here. So we have coverage there. Take a, oops, not a purple, a white. There we go, another white triangle. It needs to be oriented like this. So flip it over. And I'm gonna make sure that this point and this point are in line. And then I'm gonna sew on the line between one and two. There's my first two pieces. Next piece is a small purple triangle. I have already trimmed my quarter of an inch. Our purple triangle is going to be oriented like that. So flip it over. I'm going to I lined it up next to the fabric here, but that's our seam allowance line. So we have plenty of um, fabric to work with over there. So, so on the line between E2 and E3, here's my first three pieces. I have gone ahead and trimmed between E3, E4, my seam allowance. Take another small light triangle. It's gonna be oriented like that. So flip it over, let's just line it up with that purple triangle. And you can see my point here is lined up with that point. We're gonna sew on the line between E3 and E4. There is this piece right here, it's identical. Um, the piece that I demonstrated. The rest of these are exactly the same. So I'm gonna put all of them together and I'll be honest with you, I thought maybe these were gonna be too small, but they worked out fine, so. My cut pieces are good. And remember, I have those at my website in the link, to, and there's a link down below this video that you can go to my website and use my cut pieces if you want to. All right, let me get all these pieces put together and then we'll put our block together. Here's all my pieces finished up. I've got them laid out. Um, one thing I wanna say is the center piece, I sewed it on each side with a short stitch and then trimmed it up like that so it did become a paper piece for the corners. I did lay these out by section letters. So I have, down in this right hand corner, I have A and B. And you want it to make a triangle with this hourglass in the middle. That's how you want all of these corners to look. So I've got A and B, C and D, E and F, G and H, because they are a little different. You can't really make four of the same corners with this. Can you? Yeah. You can make two of the same corners, but this is what I'm doing. I'm laying it out per section so that I know that I have the right pieces together. So we want to put these pieces, these corner pieces together along this center line right here. And let's see, does not nest, but that's okay. Does butt up against, you've got the right angle corners right here together and then my notch falls over here. <clears throat> So that's how I'm gonna put all four of these corners together. 
and then we'll lay them back down in place. And I'm gonna iron this open, I think. There's my four corners put together. At this point, it doesn't really matter where you put them. And we're just gonna put them onto, now I'm gonna sew them onto this center square. So line them up. My notches over here and over here are gonna hit the side of the center section. And I am going to sew on the line. I got my first two corners on and I actually ironed towards this center block because there's a lot less bulk. Um, I tried ironing them open and I just didn't like the bulk that was there. So that's what I did, iron towards that center section. So now I'm gonna add these on and our edges will line up with these notches on our corners. Here's my finished block. I'm ready to put the applique in. What I have done, it's probably very hard to see, but I have creased my center block here. So right there is my center where the two creases meet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cor my quarter inch corner right on that center. So this corner is right on the center where the two creases meet. And that's how I'm going to put my blocks down. And I'm gonna put this corner right in here and that'll give me a quarter of an inch away from each crease, which will give me a half an inch between each piece. So let's put this, I know it's hard probably for you to see the creases, but I can see them. So there's one. I'm gonna put all four of these down before I get them ironed so that I can make sure that they look straight. <clears throat> so I am going to turn it. And now, if I want to, I can put my quarter inch on this crease, put my half inch from this um, piece, and then that's where this will go. All right. So we have a half an inch between these two pieces. I'm gonna put, oops, pull it back a little, go half inch. Just putting the half inch right here on this piece. And now I can put this one down. Looks like I might need to adjust that one a little. That looks better. All right, so half inch here, half inch here, half inch here, which means this will go, I'm gonna put it right on that one inch line. I'm gonna get it put down and then I'm gonna just kinda eyeball this now to make sure that I can get it. So it looks good to my perspectives. All right, I don't know, I think that looks good to me, so I am gonna iron that down. H8 Eaton's Crossroads, I did variation two, which as you just saw was that applique center. That's a fun block to put together. This week we start on our right side border, so we are a quarter of a way through this. Um, it's right here, right side one is Tennessee Valley. And this is what the foundation paper pieces look like. I've got a ton of pieces here. And if you go to my website, there's a link below this video that takes you to my website and has all my cut pieces on it. So you can use my cut pieces. So I'm not gonna go through these. Um, you'll find out what cuts go where on here because there's a lot of different cut pieces. So it's not going to be too hard. I think I'll put this together and I'll start putting that together. And um, that's what we got. Obviously, these long pieces are going to be here. And I will sew these onto this piece like I did in the last block and then use them as paper pieces. So let me get everything cut up and uh, we'll get to work.
I'm going to start with the bottom section of this block. What we need for this one is the red, my red triangles, my white triangles, and this long piece that goes in the bottom. So we're starting on this side, and then we're working our way across through the triangles, and then we'll add the strip on the bottom. I have drawn it out on the back. So the paper edges are basically my section. We're going to start here, and I wrote one. That's our first piece, and I put a white so I knew on this side what I was working with. Then two red, three white, and so on. I am working in real time here. I found out that these triangles that I cut don't really work down here because they aren't the same shape as if you were to take a square and cut it down the um on the diagonal so that when you're flipping it, it gets all skewed and doesn't work. So I have taken now two squares and I'm gonna try using squares here and see how that works for me. So still got my drawings. You can see I've sewn some. I put a quarter of an inch line here so that I can line this up. On that line and then I'm gonna take my square I'm going to line it up here so that I have plenty over on this side of this seam line right here. And then we have plenty to work with out in this area where we need to go. And that's where we need to go. So I'm going to give this a shot with squares and see how it works. And if it works, I'm going to be, you'll be getting squares in the pieces that I put on my website. There's my first two squares. I'm now going to come between A2 and A3 and trim it. So you can see how weird that looks because it's just a weird triangle. So let's get this trimmed. Yes. And the next one we put on is this white. And I've got plenty over here and over here, so this should work. Let's give it a shot. There's my third piece. Let's turn it over and see how it looks over here between A3 and A4 when we trim it. Okay, we got enough to trim there. That's a good sign. So here's my red square. And again, I'm going to make sure I have plenty over here. And it comes up here to my seam allowance. I know I'm making a disastrous mess. There's my seam allowance. And if it's going to get flipped this way, we should have plenty to work with. But let's see. My fourth piece. Let's trim it. Yep. All right. These squares are working better than the triangles were. All right, so I'm going to finish out these last three pieces and then we'll come back and put the long piece on. I got these on. So it's just like the pitch of the triangles is a little different. It's not really right angle. So that's why I switched to using squares. Anyway, let's put on our last one. This long piece at the bottom. Let's trim it up. And I'm going to line it up so that these corners are on the outside of my corners. And then I'm going to get this sewn on. And this piece will be done a little harder than I anticipated. I shouldn't say harder than anticipated. This paper piecing wasn't hard. It was figuring out the cut pieces I should use that was more difficult than I anticipated. So... This is done. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to start this, but once we get past the first couple, the rest is going to be exactly the same. So I need all of these pieces and all of these pieces. Right here. So the first piece is my largest rectangle. Got white, red, white, red, white, red, white, and red. All right, start down here. I'm going to put this big piece a quarter of an inch over my line. 
and I need coverage there. I need coverage here. And you can see that I can't see those marks, so I'm good. Now I need the longer, longest red piece. And that's going to go here. And I need coverage all the way out to here and all the way out to here. So it looks like I'm going to have coverage there. Now we'll sew between C8 and C7. And you know what? C1's up here, but I'm starting with the big piece and moving up. And there's where I need coverage is right here. And when I fold it over, I have that coverage. So I'm going to turn it over in between my C7 and C6. And yes, I'm working from largest piece to smallest piece on this. You can go from top to bottom or bottom to top. And that's what I'm doing, bottom to top. Trim it. Grab my next white piece right here. We're just gonna start going down the sizes. Line it up. I need coverage from here and here, so I need coverage out to there. And it looks like it's going to work. So I'm gonna get this sewn up. There's my third piece. And you can see I can't see any of the lines that I drew, so we're looking good there. And I'm now going to trim between four and five. Sorry. Grab my next red piece. Nope, I still want to use a longer red piece here. And we want to go here and here. So this is plenty big. All right, I'm going to get this sewn on. And then we're just working up with the smaller pieces as we go, just like this. So I'm going to finish this piece out. There's my first half put together. All my pieces fit really well. I did alter this one to be bigger because I just made it to my corner here. So I made this piece bigger when it goes up on my website. All right, so there's that first half. I'm gonna finish this half and we'll get it all trimmed up and put it together. Okay, I got my pieces done. Put these two center pieces together. Let's match them along this center edge, making sure that our sections line up. Um, and then we're going to add this onto the bottom. I took the long white fabric strips that I had and I sewed them into the seam allowance of my paper pieces. Two down here, two down here, and then trimmed around that so that these are paper pieces. And the way they're going to go onto my block is the flatter side is going down here and then the more slanted side is going to go up here and the longer one goes on the right side. So I'm gonna start by putting these two together. And I will start down here with this right angle and see how everything is lining up. And it looks pretty good. So let me get some clips, clip this in place. And we'll get this sewn together, and I'm going to iron this open. And it matches up here also. So, we're looking good. There's my center sewn together. I ironed it open, so now we want to put these two pieces together. So let's see how this is going to work. Well, I cut the notches, but it may be hard to see. I'm just going to make sure I have about the same little tail on each side here and then sew it down. Here's our bottom piece and I ironed that open also. So we need to put the shorter piece on this side. So let's see how this is gonna fit. You got real time block making with Carrie again here. So I've already sewn this on once and I just didn't have it right. So I ripped it out. What I'm doing not sure about the notches so what I did was I put 
my pin in this corner and it came out this corner and I'm going to line it up that way, which looks like the two corners of these two pieces right here meet. So if you want to try that, that might work. And then I'm just going to line it up the side here. And these up here will meet also. These two corners. Right here and right here. So... Let's see how that turns out, because the first time I did it, it didn't turn out straight here. So obviously I did something wrong. So I'm going to get it sewn again, and let's see how it turns out this time. I ironed towards my white piece here, and it actually turned out better, a lot better. Um, there's still a little bit of a gap, but I can work with that, where before it was way up here by the quarter inch line. So let's put the long piece on. And I'm going to do the same thing with the pin just to make sure I get it in the right spot. Put my pin through that corner. Bring it out through this corner. Line it up and let's get it clipped. Let's we'll see where it lands. There is a little bit of a tail right here, so I'm still going to sew it. I'm actually, I think, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit on my own here. And I'm going to see how this turns out. So I brought it down so it's with this notched corner right there. Let's try it. There we go. That's pretty good. That's good. I've got a notch here. What if I would have so ironed that up? <laughs> nope, that wouldn't have made a difference. It's less than a quarter of an inch, so it will get caught here when I put my um, next triangle on in the future. So I'm going with it. That was a difficult block. I really was not anticipating this one to be difficult, but it was. It was a little more difficult than I thought it would be, but I got it done and I got it done to my happiness which is what matters. All right, we are finished with our blocks for this week. We are making some real progress. I've taken pictures of all my blocks that I made this week so that I can populate my photo quilt, which is really fun. Is anybody else who is using the Dear Jane add-on using the quilt population? Um, I do the color and I'm doing the photo population. So I get to put my beautiful blocks in and see how my quilt is progressing. Let me know also in the comments what you think of how I modified some of these blocks, um, which variations did you use, if you used any of the variations. And if you want to share your blocks, use the hashtag DearJaneQAL on social media and I'll find them. You can tag me, Canary Quilts, and I'll find it that way and I'll share your blocks because all, everybody loves to see how much people are progressing on this, what colors they choose, and just how beautiful everybody's blocks are, are going to be. So let's get to populating my quilt, because I love doing this. All right, we have A13. Oh, look at that. We have D5. We have G3 right there. H8, and I remembered to turn this before I put it in, but you could rotate it um, as we're in the quilt here. So, look at that. Oh my gosh, we have turned the corner. It is so exciting. Look at all these blocks. We need to populate a little more up here. Anyway, if you want to follow along, um, or if you want to start the, Q the quilt along with us, hit the subscribe button notification bell and you'll get notified of all my future content and all the other fun stuff we got going on here. But thanks for following along. I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to seeing your blocks and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!